What's up everybody? Welcome back. Today we are flying up to Gainesville in the Piper Archer and we're going to be talking about my first year flying as a private pilot. I want to talk about some of the things I really improved on my first 12 months. What were some of my favorite parts about my first year as a pilot? And then of course, how much it actually cost me over the last 12 months to fly about two times a week. So let's head over to the airport. So before I even get started, if you like any kind of aviation content, any kind of sales content, and then lastly, travel content, go ahead and press subscribe and the notification bell next door and come back for my other videos. Now, I would be doing us a disservice if I didn't actually start this 12-month review of being a private pilot with where I actually started. So on June 18th, 2018, I took my first private pilot check ride, and I actually ended up failing it due to short field landings. I went back up with my instructor, got the sign off again after doing some practice, and on June 22nd, 2018, I went back up for my second check ride and actually passed it, earned my private pilot certificate, and on June 24th, 2018, I actually went up with a fellow pilot for my first flight post certificate. On June 28th, I actually had my first solo flight as the pilot in command PIC with my private pilot certificate. When I actually took my check ride for the first time on the 18th, I had 113 total hours. For those of you that don't fly or are learning to fly right now, 113 hours to actually earn your private pilot certificate is a lot of time. It's a lot more than the average, and the reason I feel was I had, one, a very erratic schedule. So for those of you learning to fly or those that are, are interested in learning to fly, you got to make sure that you actually have a set schedule, and that has to do with just making sure that you're remembering the material and actually putting it into muscle memory, getting up and flying the plane. Number two was I was actually trying to save money by starting the Skycatcher 162, which is a two-seater light sport aircraft, so it was a little less to, to rent while I was learning to fly but right before learning to land, I realized I actually wanted to learn in the 172. So I spent about 21 hours in the 162 before transitioning over. And of course I had to spend extra time getting used to the new avionics. So what did I actually improve on over the last 12 months? Exit Tower to 431 on Yankee, runway 7 echo 4, ready for departure. November 431 on Yankee, Orlando Executive Tower, Northwest Sounds approved, runway 7 clear for takeoff. Runway 7, clear for takeoff, 431 on Yankee. Realistically, I improved on a lot of stuff in terms of flying, but there are four pieces that really stuck out for me. The very obvious one is gonna just be overall flying. 
What I mean by that is not just actually flying the plane, but everything that has to do with leaving the non-movement area and taking off. Things like communicating with the tower, any kind of communication realistically, air traffic control if you're getting flight following, all the way down to airspace, stuff that you really gotta know and become familiar with. You get your certificate, but it's really, as the DPE says, a license to learn. You now can go fly solo as pilot in command, but you are gonna spend a long time learning Learning. And I know I'm talking about the first 12 months, but realistically, you're always learning as a pilot. What really helped me is actually getting up and just doing it. Not only on my own, but taking an instructor up and getting better. So what I'm saying there is to go try new things, go fly to new airports, go get checked out in new planes. What that also means is that if you don't feel comfortable with trying something new, like flying to a new airport, go and talk to your FBO or the flight school that you learned at or rent from and go grab an instructor and do it with you. That's completely okay. Number two is just flying with passengers. I really have improved on that over the last 12 months and it's not just putting somebody in the plane with you because you are a pilot in command. I'm talking about just overall comfort with having somebody in there and actually using them in an, as an asset for me flying the plane. I still remember taking up my first passengers and I didn't feel that I really wanted to do it again until I had some more time under my belt. And so I did spend about 15 hours flying solo, doing cross countries, and finally started taking passengers again and felt a lot more comfortable. What that really did for me was really get even more comfortable with the avionics and flying the plane so that when I put an extra variable, the other passenger that has no idea what's going on in the plane in the right seat with me, that I knew what I was doing, I knew where I was going, I knew how to communicate, and even if they were sick or distracted or uncomfortable, that I could actually give them a little bit of my attention. Which really leads to what I improved on and that was asking once I had passengers with me to see what they were comfortable about what what were things that maybe scared them like beeping noises in a Skyhawk something that maybe as a pilot you're really comfortable with but for somebody that's never been outside of their car might not really be sure of what's going on in the cockpit you disengage autopilot in the 172 and it likes to beep at you if I was the passenger for the first time I'd kind of be like hey what What's the beeping noise up here at 7,500 feet? Which is all conveniently leads to the third thing I really improved on and that was cockpit management. Lack of a better term here, cockpit management essentially is just efficiently multitasked. One of the ways that I improved on that is again, just going to fly the plane, but I did it without passengers. I went up on my own, became very, very familiar with a checklist. I became very familiar with what was going on in the plane. And I tried to put myself in different situations such as flying into a new airport. But I tried to push myself without extending any of my personal minimums. The fourth piece here was my aeronautical decision-making, ADM. By definition, ADM is a systematic approach to risk assessment and stress management. While a lot of the stuff that we learn as we are earning our private for pilot certificate talks about assessing risk, dealing with any kind of personal attitudes like anti-authority. The crazy thing about all of this is that good judgment really can be taught and techniques to actually judge risk and see what's going on and assessing what kind of scenario you're in can be taught. If you notice that uh, the airport that you're planning to fly to is actually under a marginal VFR weather condition, are you really gonna take off as a VFR pilot? No. And that no is for me. It's my personal minimum. Some people might actually not have that as a personal minimum because technically marginal VFR is VFR. What really helped me improve on my ADM was really taking a look at the entire picture and not just flight planning, but taking into account every kind of variable that you might not actually think about if you're just learning to fly. Because again, when you're just learning, you're really just thinking about how to make sure to take off or land or get over to this airport with your CFI in the right seat. So what were my favorite parts about my first 12 months? One is something really personal to me and it's because I spent a lot of time flying on my own before I started taking passengers and it's just the actual experience of aviation. I can still remember my first flight over to Albert Witted uh, SPG, having my cup of coffee and watching planes take off and land, and I flew there all by myself. I'd worked hard for my private pilot certificate, and I got to go rent a plane and fly there by myself. Not a lot of people get to enjoy that, and it's an amazing experience. There's a lot of responsibility, and you have to remain proficient, not just current, but I wouldn't have changed anything for the first year and a half of earning my certificate 
took it even the last 12 months. My second favorite part is part of that first one, just the overall experience, but very specific to fly into new airports, experience it and meeting the actual community. There are a lot of cool people in aviation. Everyone's got an amazing story. A lot of people do this for a career or have a massive history with aviation. So anybody that's flying or anybody that's a mechanic or anybody part of the general aviation community or really aviation community as a whole, most likely has a really cool backstory. They might not think it, but all you have to do is actually ask and hear their story. The last piece is something that I really enjoy and it's probably a little more personal to me and that's sharing the experience with others. When I take somebody to a new city, somewhere that they've never been before, I love sharing that city with them. I love to be able to show them what's going on, where I've been. It's the same thing for aviation. One of the coolest experiences is to take somebody up in the plane with you, go for coffee, and they've never experienced it before. Just to be able to talk with them or to see their facial reactions and their expressions and to hear how they feel when they actually get back down to the ground is just really cool. So the last part of this video is actually going to be on cost. The cost I incurred to actually rent a plane for the last 12 months. I went about two times a week and I did just say it, I do rent, I do not have my own plane. And the rate I actually had is something called a wet rate, so fuel is included there. And I don't always go on cross country, so that actually keeps the cost down a little low. So the final cost for flying over the last 12 months with my private pilot certificate, and this was by renting, is $10,850.20. That's 904 $904 and 18 cents for a month and $208.66 a week. While that is not a cheap hobby, it is a lot cheaper than actually earning your private pilot certificate. And for the experiences that you get and the personal growth that you actually have as a pilot, I think are completely worth that. It is an investment in yourself. It is a great experience. Would I do this 12 months again? Yes. Would I go and get my private pilot certificate again? Yes. I just would make sure I wouldn't fail the short field landings this time. So that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. I have loved my first 12 months flying and I can't wait to make this a lifelong hobby. I will be planning on sharing what I actually keep in my flight bag, especially as a private pilot. And I do wanna actually share what I've done recently in terms of the real estate investments. So come on back. I hope you have a great weekend. See ya.